Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 515, Halo Returns, and Biowolf 2, recorded live on October 29th, 2015. Hello everyone, welcome to Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I'm your host, Duststorm. I'm your other host, Haas. I'm Godzilla T. And back from the depths of Hamsterville Internet, we have Biowolf returning to the podcast. Welcome back, dude. I'm back. Thanks, man. It's been too long. Way too long. <laughs> Way too long. A lot of people have been trying to figure out where the hell you have been. Yeah. It's good to have you back. As many people as were hunting the truth, they were hunting where is Biowolf. <laughs> Hunt the Biowolf. Hunt the Biowolf. Yep. Hunt the Biowolf. It's easy. But yeah, no, I'm we back. Hunt the Biowolf. No? Okay. <laughs> that. I'll, I'll walk myself out. Take it. Time to go. <laughs> On that note, Halo 5 is here! Yay! Yay! Yeah. It's been... God, it seems like it's been years. I know. And it's so <laughs> awesome to have it here. It's so nice to actually play with a lot more people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have thoroughly enjoyed the last three days with Halo 5. Very it's good. crazy how the Switch has gone from, I need enough people to play this playlist to, oh have, man, it, how am I going to play this playlist with this many people here? I don't want to be rude. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many people now. It's so awesome. I had out a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's it's a great Hi. problem to have. It was like last oh, night. Sure. I had I reached my highest total friends online at one time, which was like forty two people, and ninety percent of them were playing Halo Five. My friends list unfortunately isn't quite that way. I had I think at most, at least while I've been on, at most sixty eight people, and that's maybe about half of my friends list. Mm hmm. So, but there's a lot of people on Halo now, which is really nice. Yeah. I kept out at 77 of 90 people playing Halo at one time. Nice. Yeah. I had to count. I, my grand total was 95 out of 204. Dang, you're popular. Nah, no, I friend a lot of people. <laughs> I just played with a lot of people. Well, back in the day when I actually had it and I used to play, but no. Um, but no, there it's it's just really good to see people back on halo instead of other games yeah i see you on destiny a lot hey oh mm. <laughs> yeah i thought he didn't play xbox destiny i thought he only played playstation destiny well he tweets a bunch of destiny yeah, that's yeah that's a that's playstation mostly got it but halo is here it's been out for a couple of days now Everyone's getting their hands into it. It's been so fun seeing the, the positive responses from it. Very few negative responses I think I've seen at all from people on Twitter, people on Facebook. Overall, it's a very refreshing experience. And I think a lot of the game reviews kind of reflect that. The multiplayer is on point. The campaign is fun. They're still waiting on forage unfortunately and not some other few game types but overall it's gotten some pretty good reception i think from both the press and people just playing the game yeah oh, the, no, no. yeah the only negatives i've heard are you know about the lack of game types because they're waiting on forge to finish yep to you know release the game types but you know, that's the only real negatives I've heard. I mean, I've had some I've had some negative comments about campaign. And as someone that reads the extra lore, honestly, they could put twice as much stuff in the campaign as far as story, and I still wouldn't feel like it's enough. Yeah. They answer a lot of good questions, which we won't go into tonight, but there's a lot lot a lot of things that have happened over the last three years that make a lot more sense now yep i will say they did in my opinion they did a lot better than they did in halo 4 with telling the story oh, definitely there's definitely a lot more in there where you don't have to be quite as versed in the external fiction in order to kind of get the gist of what's going on but i do kind of agree with the general consensus where it, the story seems to be a little bit hollow but mm -hmm. 
if you watch the legendary ending or, or get to the ending at all, it's a great like they, they do a really good job setting up the franchise from here on out, which yeah. I think that's what they tried to do with Halo 4 being their first real Halo title. And there's been a lot of comparisons to Halo 5 being 343's Halo 2, which it seems pretty indicative that Halo 5 is 343's Halo 2. <laughs> the multiplayer yeah, is, that a lot. is fantastic. The campaign having um, the co-op in there is just... And the, the kind of the cliffhanger ending is very reminiscent of the Halo 2 cliffhanger ending for a lot of people. Yeah, I really hope this doesn't become a pattern. <laughs> yeah. It makes you want more, though, which is good in a sense. They had me at Halo. They had most of us at Halo. <laughs> <laughs> I, they don't need to leave it at a cliffhanger for me to want more. <laughs> um, I will caveat this a little bit. We're not going to be going into any spoilers from this episode. We're going to touch mostly on just kind of gameplay and experience. Next week, we'll, we'll start to dive into more of the story of it. So feel free to listen to this episode. It's not going to be spoiler heavy at all. Well, there really shouldn't be any spoilers um, that we'll be talking about. So feel free to listen to this one. And we're going to be diving in just kind of our, our initial experience with, with the game. But I will say for the campaign stuff, other than it being kind of hollow, there was some, I mean, the mechanics in there for the, the teams and the squads and all that stuff is, it, it was all right. I will say that the allied AIs are dumb as hell. Yes, I was expecting oh, yeah. a much more intelligent AI. And I was hoping that yeah. once I got onto the dedicated servers, like I was thinking it may have been just because I'm playing solo and the hardware for the local console, they may just not be doing as many calculations for the AI. But then when it got to the point where they actually turned on the online servers, the AIs really didn't get any smarter. And it's no, just they're they're pretty stupid. I mean, they're good at they're good if you give them direction, but even you then. really have to. Well, you really do have to babysit them because you know, you might give them a target and they won't exactly start firing on that target right away. They get the the funny thing is they talk back to you. They do, yeah, it, yeah, it, 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 and not in a good way. It's like I'm busy. They're giving you attitude to give them an order. Pretty much. <laughs> Buck's the worst at it. You know, there's things that, like, well, one of the things is you can get as you can get them to get on a mounted turret, but as soon as that turret's broke off, they won't pick it up. No, no, that's your job. You're the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think there are some weapons that are, they are scripted not to pick up just because of how they utilize certain weapons in the game. That's my guess because they won't pick up. An energy sword, I think. I have not had them try to pick up an energy energy sword. Uh, like the only one that I've had a problem with is turrets. Yeah, it's just the turrets because every other weapon they've picked up. Them driving's not exactly the best either. <laughs> well, I never trust AI to drive. Reminiscent of Cat a little too much. Cat created <laughs> a lot of trust issues. <laughs> I, I trusted Cat once, never again. But overall, I was pretty impressed with the with the AI mechanics. Yes, they were kind of stupid, but it is nice that you can, with a little patience, you can direct them. Where in previous games, getting AI to help you was like hurting cats. You had to like just straight up drop just, kick them to do anything. Yeah, you didn't really get any help from them. So that that is definitely an improvement. Um, still working on the Spartan abilities. I'm not quite, haven't quite got a hang of them. Yeah, I have. I had an epic ground pound against Zach in campaign last night. It was like two in the morning and we just cleared this checkpoint. We're getting ready to jump. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, quickly ground pound all the way across the, the map here so I can get to the next checkpoint loading zone. And I'm just flying across the zone. And he apparently was running outside of my zone. I just smashed him and killed him. It was great. <laughs> nice. I had a, an interesting glitch with the ground pound and campaign. I was about to ground pound an elite. And Buck came over and was like messing with him. And as soon as I hit the ground pound, Buck stepped right underneath me and threw me up in the air and killed me. I'm like, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm like, it, it's, all, it's all my Xbox uh, records. 
uh, on my upload. It was pretty humorous. To say oh, I've got I've gotten some footage of different AI characters getting stuck. <laughs> you guys see this? <laughs> I haven't watched yours, just, but I have seen some issues where the AI have gotten tripped up in certain areas, but they usually have gotten out all right. Well, let's see. The first one I saw was on the blue team mission. I think it was Kelly. You had to go, drop down through a hole, but you had to open it first. And she's running up against this cylinder and just just running into it and jumping up just over and over again until it opened. And then, yeah. you know, everybody yeah. goes down. Uh, second one was a knight on one of the elevators <laughs> he got stuck in i guess this is where he spawned i don't know but the the elevator quit moving and i'm like well why is it not moving well i didn't have all the enemies killed and here's this knight and he's stuck in a hole between the catwalk and the 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 wall of the elevator <laughs> doing the same thing jumping and getting stuck and i'm standing there right underneath him and he's stuck in this animation, so he's not shooting me. And I'm like, really? Oh, free kill. You get stuck here. Yeah, yeah free kill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got to I gotta say, knights are punishing now. Oh, my oh. gosh. They are. I have only played it on normal. And <laughs> I'm like, Having hard beating time. this thing on legendary oh, is going to take forever. Oh, they're um, not nearly as bad as the wardens, dude. Not nearly as bad. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. The Prometheus next thing is period the... on legendary have been quite challenging to overcome, and we are running four. Yeah. The covenant you say... can get through. You just have to be aware of those snipers and your quick death. But uh -huh. after yeah. that, holy. Speaking cow. of which, we will at some point be doing a four-player legendary co-op stream for our Twitch stream. So get ready for that. It'll be either next week or the week after. So should be fun. It'll, it'll happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Just like our four person ghost run. We still need to do that. I still need that achievement. Yeah. So bio has internet now. Yep. It's not good internet, but like, I it never should said make it for good. Sure. We, we never expected <laughs> it to be good. Bio. I mean, I, it should make for a real interesting, um, playthrough to see where kind of <laughs> glitches would come in. But, um, I foresee, but, Bio teleporting a lot. Yeah, a lot of people have said that. What a couple different things. Um, he can be Tanaka. There we go. Yeah, I could be Tanaka. <laughs> just going through stuff. Um, but the I just I love the way the, the campaign plays. Like it's like just the gameplay mechanics itself are just awesome compared to what we've seen before. Uh, Halo fours were real weird i don't know if it was just the 30 fps or or the 60 fps this time around but it felt real like real clean i guess the way i'm looking at it i don't really know the word for it but it's awesome to play through no see i, I definitely like Halo 4 from a playing standpoint in master chief collection more than mm -hmm. in or on the 360 right i, I really like the 60 fps oh yeah you know, yeah the, the games just run so much smoother my shots hit or i hit my shots a lot more accurately it's like tonight i was playing some swat and i was one kill away from a rampage you guys have no idea how many rampages i've had i can count them on one hand nice dude <laughs> so and i like the guy that killed me i was just a hair too slow he, he got the got the kill shot off just before i did ah uh, and it's i you know i was doing sweeping shots i've never been able to do sweeping shots i will say for halo 5 my best halo for me i think personally is halo 2 that's the one game i'm actually able to aim well with the sniper rifle do well in most matches against some usually better players than myself in Halo 5, I have that very similar feeling. And I don't know if that's just because of being similar to Halo 4. I mean, I'm, I'd am i say I'm all right at Halo 4. There's definitely lots of other areas in Halo 4 that I don't do quite as well. But in Halo 5, I it feels good. And I can usually hold out for a little bit longer in terms of 
being able to keep my aim and do a lot better in Halo 5 than I have been able to in Halo 4, definitely Halo 3. Halo 3 is my worst Halo for multiplayer. Oh, I think Halo 3 is everybody's worst Halo. Yeah. Some people di- live and I die mean, by Halo to, 3. Well, I mean, as far as your, you know, the average group of players. Yeah. I mean, there's people that are, you know, pro quality players that, you know, they, Halo 3 is their best game. That is definitely not my best game. I'm very good at sticking people in Halo 3, if that counts for anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is, well, I mean, um, most Halo games are good at sticking, so. Uh, Halo 5 is different. Kind of the kind of hard. Work, the stickies don't work the same. No. There's something just a little bit off about them. I've never the really gotten into a say, good position where I am trying to stick somebody. It's always I'm going for a splash damage with a sticky. The only time I've really been trying to hit somebody is with those splinter grenades, which are so much fun to use. You're oh, God, those things are so, so powerful. Uh, you really got to pay attention when those things are on the map. Oh, yeah. You yeah. I don't want to get hit by one. But the one yeah, thing I have to admit, I like the fact that we don't have the uh, Mexican jumping being plasma grenades anymore <laughs> the you know, they hit the ground a foot away from you and then they jump on you i know what he's talking about i've been in those situations before I mean, they just don't I, bounce as much yeah. yeah no they land on the ground and stop and then jump over to the spartan's foot yeah you kind of like step on it kind of like gum oh no, not almost. step on it the guy's moving uh, away from the plasma grenade it leaps off the ground and sticks to his leg that sounds to me like there's lag going on there. <laughs> I don't know. No, the, the plasma grenades just interesting. They bounce a little bit when they hit the ground. And that's in the hard surface. They're moving the opposite direction, or at 90 degree from the direction they were traveling. Hmm. I, that Literally, sounds like the, lag. I mean, it probably is, but I noticed it. I noticed it the worst in Halo 4. Halo 3, mm, sometimes. But Halo 4, it was just... It, un- Every time I would see some uh, plasma grenade fly by, not necessarily fly at me because I, you know, you can't see that because it's not in your field of vision. But like I watch one of my teammates get stuck, mm-hmm. I'd see this plasma grenade hit the ground, and I'm like, "Well, he's going to die because he's within the blast radius of it." And then all of a sudden, it leaps off the ground and attaches to him. Hmm. And I've watched it. I, I've watched it happen with my own grenades when I'm throwing them at somebody. You know, I'm just going for the concussive damage and all of a sudden it'll leap off the ground and attach to the leg and i get a stick metal for it hey I, I'm, I'm not arguing. i wouldn't complain Something wrong <laughs> <laughs> but i like that with the servers and with the 60 frames per second the dedicated servers you're not falling victim to that kind of lag no, I haven't seen too much of it this time around. And it's it's weird, and I'm kind of getting off topic a little bit, but it's weird. Um, Halo 5 has really switched up a lot of things for me, um, including my sensitivity. I was a person, and a lot of people have noticed, but I was a person that played on two sensitivity. I liked playing slow, and I didn't like playing in 60 frames per second on MCC uh, because of that reason. I didn't like everything being so fast. Like, I, I felt things were way too off. But now I'm playing on five. I'm playing on five sensitivity, and my shots are dead accurate now, which is nice. And there, it just, I was really good at SWAT for a while. And then Halo 5, horrible. It, like everything that was good at in other past Halos, I, it like switched completely. I don't know how to explain or why that's the case, but Arena's really where it's at for me right now, which is, I'm liking. I'm liking a lot. Arena's pretty much spot on the way i wanted it to be yeah i've actually had to dial mine back really because like well in mcc i generally run between eight and ten on my sensitivity my gosh dude right and call of duty holy crap (laughs) (laughs) peaking like kids (laughs) my little brother plays on that um, man well i mean it causes its own problems but it's kind of and Different days, it's different sensitivities. But on average, it's between 8 and 10. But in Halo 5, I had to back it down to 6. Hmm. Just because the fact that I was overcorrecting too much. I've kept mine at 3, and it feels nice. <laughs> I'll just say that. Same. 
A lot of people are like, how can you play that low? I'm fine. I'm doing perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really feel like Halo 5 is a case by case. You know, how well, every what, game is that way. Is con- yeah, I just feel like there's this one that, you know, you usually you get the universal kind of number, but I feel like it's kind of a bigger deal. I'm talking more about my look sensitivity with people than I think I have in any Halo game. Yeah, it's weird. <clears throat> it's really weird because I I know people that usually play lower and like people don't understand understand that i try explaining them oh you know sensitivity too high this is the reason why for that they don't understand it and it's like now i'm kind of going backwards from that it just i don't know it's it's really weird like the people that usually usually play fast are going slower the people that are going slower seem to go faster i it, it, in most cases that i've seen so far and it's weird like i didn't think sensitivity would be that big of a topic in a halo game i just i didn't see it that way just means the playstyle has changed a lot for Halo Five, which is refreshing to see. I think I think the changes that they made for the multiplayer are excellent so far. Really enjoying Warzone. Oh yeah, Breakout. I'm not a huge fan of personally, but I've gotten to at least be decent at it. I wouldn't say I'm good at it, but I'm decent at it. And the, I mean, for uh, Warzone, it's kind of the big thing right right now with having the different armor mods and the different weapon mods that you can attach and having all the rec cards on there. It's just a very fun game mode. I really enjoy playing Warzone. I I have not enjoyed Warzone. Like it seems like a lot of people have and it's really weird. I I don't I've tried myself up to 12 people and it just something just hasn't clicked for me. Breakout has clicked a lot more there than it had in the beta and Obviously, Arena is kind of my boo, so... You seem to be a lot more of the competitive, like, classical 4v4 team. Yeah, yeah I, I think yep. that's my problem with Warzone is I don't... My my stats, they matter, but the level of matter is so wow. minute to, yeah. to other game modes. I think that's where my struggle is. And I'm really excited for just the traditional big team battle to come back. There or to be there and not really come back, but when that comes out, to really see how that plays between Warzone and traditional arena. Yeah, it. I like Warzone. I really do. I like it a lot. It's just I have to be playing with playing it with a lot of people in order to enjoy it. Um, I don't necessarily know if that's everyone's opinion. But it just I get more of an a blast. I have more of a blast playing with other people because there's some really funny stuff that happens in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, we it, it, it's really reminiscent of big team battle in a way, but it has a new spin on it to where you have objective um, to do different things, which I like uh, the E3 really got me hyped up for Warzone. Like when we played through that the first time, I was just loving it. I was eating it up. And then it's like I got it now. You know, I'm I'm able to play it whenever I want. It's like I don't really go to it like I thought I would. I'm more into the breakout and arena like hosses than I was with that. And it's usually the opposite. Like big team battle is something that I enjoyed a lot and I play a lot more of um back in like Halo Four and Halo Three. That was kind of the thing I played a lot with because it was just, you know, you're with your buddies, you're having a good time and kills aren't necessarily the biggest thing to count on at that point. You're just enjoying yourself, but and Halo 5, it's reversed this time around. I don't know why. Yeah, I've only got a couple of games of War Games in, and or Warzone. So far, I'm kind of in the middle. It makes me feel a lot like the, you know, bet the, uh, you know, big team battle. But you've got the little bit of you know the AI stuff in there, which is what I generally tend to concentrate on. But I haven't really formed a definite dis, uh, decision on it, but it looks like it's going to be something that's a lot of fun to play. Now, I've only played the actual Warzone game type. I haven't played the other Warzone game type. The uh, Warzone Assault is what it is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't played it yet. I've just you know played the regular Warzone. So I'm kind of looking, uh, looking forward to trying that as well. So the thing for me in Arena is I'm kind of waiting until I have a set four players that I can go into arena with and play to get 
some good ranked in there. I don't really want to go in on my own into the arena, unless it's like FFA, because you have to go on your own. So I'm kind of waiting until I have a team that I can actually go in with or have enough people on whenever I'm on to say, okay, let's go play some arena and let's let's rock this out, which is why I haven't really played arena yet much either. So Warzone is kind of definitely that it scratches that big team edge and it, it is that kind of big team for now. And I think it's more that kind of more casual experience than big team even was because you do have so many different things that you can do within it. You can go for the AI boss. You can go for the bases. You can go for other players. And granted, there are times when other teams, like either your team or the enemy team, can just completely decimate you. And that's always true in big team as well. But I think Warzone just is a lot more inviting than big team was for Halo. I can understand that, yeah. There's, there's, I think the the idea of there's more object. Not saying that there wasn't objectives in big team battle, but the you know the bosses and you having to get the one, wait the the bases. You have to get the bases and stuff like that. There's a lot more going on. There's a lot more interactivity going on this time around with Warzone. And a lot of people like the rec pack stuff too. You know, a lot of people like the fact that, oh, I got this skin along with this new cool looking site. And uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you, that kind of meets a lot of casual require not requirements, but they, they're looking for a little bit more than just what big team battle was. And I think Halo fives hit that perfectly with Warzone. The one thing I think that they're going to have to watch is some of their ultra rare and legendary vehicles. I ran across one of the special ghosts today and it was extremely hard to kill. I'm not saying that it I'm not saying that it uh was impossible. It just it took a lot more damage than I think a ghost should have to be killed. So that's what those legendary vehicles are and weapons are kind of for. They do have the special characteristics. Well, I, I understand that, but I think there's they need to pay attention to some of the balancing issues on that. Tweak them a little bit. Yeah, because one one ghost was able to pretty much pin my entire team down. So one of the things they did say before Halo Five launched, though, is that they're. And this may just be a symptom of because the game is still new. Not everyone has all these, but they do try to match with people that have very similar rec cards to use at their disposal. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for a ghost, you could just tell somebody, hey, spawn with us a rocket launcher or a Spartan laser to take out this ghost. To take it out. Yeah. This thing took out a wraith. Yeah. I think I know which ghost you're talking <laughs> OP about. Ghost. I mean, wraith is, is not that. Uh, maneuverable and not not easy, easily maneuverable no it's not it's not that maneuverable but the thing is is this thing took two wraith blasts and still wasn't dead like just some of the some of the vehicles and you know this is an early opinion they may need to do a little tweaking on to bring them more into balance i i completely agree with so you, you also know, the have special to look at the ghost cost having more health because that ghost yeah. may have been equal to or more expensive than the Wraith, in which case, if it is more expensive or if it's at least as expensive as the Wraith, then it should be doing a comparable amount of damage for the cost, which I believe a Wraith is five points? Six. Six. And I think that ghost you're talking about is either five or six. Yeah, I don't remember what the, the name of the ghost was. Um, and I, have, I did not look up the, um, the cost on it either. but. I just, you know, looking at it that way, okay, yeah, the Wraith should have been a fair match for it, but it's like this thing wasn't even taking any damage. You know, pieces were falling off of it. It didn't look like, it almost looked like I didn't even hit the thing. <laughs> but it, that's it. That's trivial stuff. Tactics. And as, as, you know, as Warzone develops, it just, it's stuff like that, I think, needs to be you know stuff like that needs to have an eye kept on it so that it doesn't overpower the enjoyment of the game yeah well and because by by what you're saying 
you know, this ghost cost six rec level, we'll say, you know, rocket launcher call call uh, costs what five. So a rocket launcher or Spartan laser is underpowered compared to this ghost. So just spawning with a Spartan laser, or a rocket launcher is not an equal match for this ghost. Uh, maybe. I think there's some of that too that is dependent on skill. I mean, nothing is going to be perfectly. I mean, they can balance all the weapons and vehicles as best as they can, but there's still a lot of mm-hmm. variables that go into player's ability. True. And I, I'm not doubting that. But I know that in my situation, this player caught two Wraith Mortars in the face. Okay. Now, the third one, it may have been a little off, but I was kind of dying at the time, so I couldn't quite tell where that one landed. <laughs> Fair enough. It's just... I, I just hope that 343 is watching this kind of stuff. I'm sure they are. They've taken a lot of feedback already. Yeah, because I don't want to have the Destiny discussion with Warzone. I think there's a lot of balance that they're they're willing to kind of compromise for this. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if it is something where the community really finds an issue with it. They'll balance it out. They'll take care of it. And I'm sure they will. I have a lot right. of faith in them. Um, I do want to ask this though. What are you guys' opinions on rec packs as of right now? Because to me, they're addicting as crap. Oh yeah, they're really addicting. Oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once I get my paycheck next week, I am probably going to be doing the same thing as Green Skull did, same thing as Chief Conduct did, and I'm going to be making a video of me opening up a hundred dollars worth of rec packs. See, I see. I enjoy eat. I enjoy eating too much. So. <laughs> yeah, I. I don't, a lot of people say, you know, it's worth the money and I'm not saying it's not, but I think I'm honestly doing what I want to do. I, I kind of have a limit. Uh, I've opened up 16 rec packs within a day, just earning points in arena. So I don't really like I had, that's pretty much fine for me. I don't think I'm going to sit there and spend that much money on rec packs because I'm just getting the points. I need to get them anyway, but I think the rec pack system itself is genius. I really oh, like yeah. The first time I heard the first time I heard microtransactions was coming to Halo 5, I didn't fully understand what was going on. And like I know they described it, it just it didn't really click with me at all. But seeing the way it was now and seeing the amount of helmets that are popping up everywhere, it's like aiming to get that one and oh, that gun looks really cool, so I don't want to get that. Like there's it's a it's addicting. Halo is an addicting hobby as it is. It's just making it that much more. <laughs> yep. And it's, I mean, the good thing about it too is that it's going towards HCS tournament prizes. And it's also the reason why all the DLC is going to be free is they're anticipating the massive support for these rec packs. And I'll admit it, I'm part of the problem. I'll, I'll happily pay for rec packs and I'm going to at some point. But the other cool thing too is that they're going to be adding stuff to the rec system down the road. So they'll add more permanent stuff as Halo comes or comes out with more DLC. So as we get more maps, as we get the new game taps and whatever, I mean, yeah, that comes out for free, but we also get new rec stuff. There's, there's going to be a hell of a lot more of that coming down the pipeline too. I mean, heck, they even announced today, or Major Nelson at least put it out there. I don't know if this is just, it started today or if it, it just kind of got out there, but you can actually buy the rec the Warzone rec bundles separately now from the game. Oh boy. And that is <laughs> that is 14 premium packs that you'll get. You get those two every week. So you get two pr- Warzone premium rec packs for 7 weeks. I can deal yeah. with that. Yeah, it Yeah, is... it's actually a decent price. It's only like 25 bucks. Yep. So is that what we got with the LCE? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Yep, yep. So yep. I can buy another one on top of that. I'm not sure. That's something I need to run by Bravo or someone else. I don't know if you can stack them like that. It'd be cool if you kind of could. Yeah, because I tried going. Yeah, it'd be cool. There's. Um, I think Laird was asking that there, the other there, day on Twitter, couple... actually. So I don't know if he found out at all. Uh, there's there's a couple things I'm hoping for to see come in the rec system. Um, I want to see some more unique wep- uh, weapon skins, which I'm sure we're going to get. But I want to see some really unique ones. Uh, some of the artists that are on divine art came up with some pretty interesting it's a gif but it's animated uh weapon skins i know that's really pushing a lot of you know wanting but 
it was really neat to see like they had a, a UNSC one that had a flame around the 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 eagle kind of doing that that would be cool to see if they did something like that kind of like gears of war in a way but like not necessarily putting that much time and effort into making the entire gun animated like that but it'd be cool to see something like that i doubt they would do an animated skin but it's not out of the realm of possibility i guess i uh, it, don't really want to see it. i mean they're cool to look at in gears of war but i would rather not see it outside of that I don't know if it has a place in Halo. Eh. I mean, they got the flaming it's... helmet. That was just kind of the same thing. Like, kind of. I I don't know. Not a fan of the idea, personally. Everyone likes what they like. I just I I think making your <sighs> Spartan more personalized and, and you know making the things the way you want them by you know unlocking that one skin or something that you want to get or that one helmet. It's exciting. It's exciting to see. Like, I was watching people's YouTube videos, and they were waiting for that one helmet they're waiting for, and they opened it up, and they just lit up. It's cool to see that. It's it's an awesome implementation that they put in there. I tell you what, if they ever go to an animated skin or something like that, I want my Grant birthday party. <laughs> That'd be cool. That would be kind of cool. I would. It would be cool to have it something I mean, from Reach, where our... if you have the death animation, you you have that. That'd be cool to add from a rec pack perspective. Add death animations or death effects. Or just effects, period. Yeah. You know, like they had in Reach. You, you had the thunderstorm. You had, uh, mm-hmm. what did they call the stinky one? The, they start with a P. Uh, pestilence or yeah, something like that. I think something it was. Like that. Yeah, pestilence. Yeah. Uh, the grand birthday party. Yep. I love that one. You know, I mean, they, they've done that kind of stuff in the past. So I don't see where. Well, Bungie did that. Having an animated. It's been done in the Halo games, so I don't see where it it couldn't happen again if they decide to vote devote the time to it. I don't think it would hurt the mechanics of the game. No, it's it's purely aesthetic. Well, I mean, it's, as far as the playability of the game, not necessarily right. you know how well you do. So maybe maybe that's something that's in the works. We can hope and pray. There's lots of different things that they could really add through the Rex system. So I'm excited. I'm super excited. They start doing armor effects. I might actually start buying them on a more regular basis. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people just going out there to trying to find the permanent unlocks. And assassinations are pretty rare. Yeah, I haven't got actually one of those opening yet. them. I have two. I have to be honest. I actually have assassinations turned off. I don't blame you for that. Because it never fails. I'll be in the middle of an assassination and somebody will kill me. <laughs> and I have never been able to get the the trigger time between just doing a beatdown and doing an assassination right. I always hold the button too long. Hmm. I rarely run into the problem, and so I'll keep it on because there are those moments where I definitely want to assassinate somebody. Mm-hmm. So I'll I'll keep it. I just want them dead. Yeah, and then you have the... The person that's gonna teabag you, and then you get the, uh, the me- what is it, revenge medal? Is it revenge? I don't remember what it's called. But by just getting that assassination right after they kill you, I kind of track them down and get that assassination. That it's kind of oh, is there one like that? That's kind of <laughs> cool. So there's some pretty interesting new medals in Halo Five too. Like I was playing with yes. some of the RUL folks the night or uh, Sunday night, and. There's a new metal called Snipalicious, and it's if you get a two-for-one headshot with a sniper rifle. And myself and Duquesne were on the receiving end of that bullet from Drax. Yeah. yeah see, you know, now, that is an action that's worth a medal. Yeah. If you get a two-for-one headshot with a sniper rifle, you deserve to get a medal for it. I got have a medal. Have any of you guys noticed that your multi-kills seem to be uh, chaining a lot easier? Um... Not really for me, no. You mean like time time in between? Yeah, like it <clears throat> seems like that that two kills within four seconds seems to last about ten seconds. It's not four seconds anymore. It's longer. I think it's yeah, I know. Four point five or four point seven seconds. <laughs> it's longer than that because I got a kill and died. No, it's not that respawn. long. Listen, I got a kill. This is in SWAT. I got a kill, died, respawned, got another kill. And got a double kill medal. Yeah, but SWAT's a little bit different because it's an a yeah. like it's a spawn right after you die. Spawn is instant like the, in SWAT. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, it was just, I was truly amazed. You know, well, usually death resets that. Mm-hmm. No, no, it, there's, there's, there's some weird situations where it, that doesn't happen. And th- that was prevalent in Reach and Halo 4 as well. I don't know if that's kind of intentional or if that's something that they just kind of left there. But yeah, there's there's situations where, um, like if, if the death is close enough, like if you're you're sharing deaths or if you get a kill very very close to your death, and it's usually like if you trade kills or if the kill register is like sli- like just after you died, then it'll keep the chain going. Yeah. See, this this has never happened to me until today. Okay. Yeah, I've had it happen to me on Reach and Halo Four as well. I'm not too keen on SWAT right now. Oh, I'm uh, me, loving it. Me and Twisted were playing it last night, and we died exactly where we respawned. And like, it that, was I ridiculous. Gotta... It it was ridiculous. Like we were we I I counted this guy got an overkill with one person because they spawned in the exact same spot. I'm like, that's a little ridiculous. They need to do some tuning with that. It's kind of nuts. Yes, they do need to work on the spawns in SWAT. Now, I haven't played any of the arena stuff yet, but I did notice that in my games, there were a couple of games, especially on the rig. Mm. I died and spawned right back where my where I just died before or within a few feet of where my, I died. Literally, one time I died, I respawned and watched my body slide down the stairs. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's kind of annoying. <laughs> it, I'm staying away from SWAT until something happens with that with a patch or something because that is kind of infuriating. Halo has always um, had a, a really finicky weight balance with spawning and SWAT. It's just kind of been a issue that's been with the game since like Halo Three, even because if you know how the spawn system works, you can spawn trap people and with how small these maps are made because they're made to be arena maps unfortunately that's just kind of how some of this stuff is and until 343 figures out where to better put spawn points with regards to swat you're you're just kind of stuck with spawn trapping and i mean that's it's not something that can always fix either because of how spawning gets weighted sometimes but i think with halo 5 they they built the game a lot more modular so it's probably something that they can go in and tweak as far as weight on spawning well, the reason I said that is because we were playing some custom games before uh, we started up here, and we were playing Capture the Flag match, and it happened. I died and respawned exactly where I died. It's it's a little irritating. Um, I love SWAT. I love it to death. I love SWAT. Halo Reach really was where I was really good at with SWAT, but I'm not feeling it this time around with 5. Not, not with the spawning system the way they are. And another thing that I've been noticing a lot is the the random map generator i've gotten like four maps in a row yeah me too like like that like i've yet to get truth i've yet to get eden or empire or any of them i don't know if they're in the rotation they but are. i've they I've are yet, in swat at least i've yet to get any of them i've literally only got rig orion uh regret and what's the other one can't remember the other one now well which players uh, are you playing because uh, some of them only have four or six different like game mode map combinations so some of the players only have three maps okay maybe I, it's, it was just team slayer arena slayer um well it's like in swat out of 10 games because i just played enough to rank i got the rig and eden the most i got plaza once and i got regret once okay it, so there, there is, there is a bug in the map rotation. You know, I want to, or there's something goofy with it, because I literally staying in matchmaking, not backing out. I got Eden three times in a row, just yeah. back to back to back. But was it the same game type? Because yeah, two different I games never left SWAT. match. I no, I there's never, two different game well, types. I never in SWAT. Yes, it was. SWAT, SWAT, SWAT. Not SWAT and then SWAT Magnums and then SWAT. It was all three were SWAT. Okay. And they were back to back to back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was and the maybe, same thing with maybe the weights are. It could be that the weights for the, the map game types are off for matchmaking. Mm-hmm. I doubt it's yeah, a bug. They, it's probably weights, if anything. 
the matchmaking system loves giving me fathom. I've known, I got to know that map very well. <laughs> I know where all the weapons <laughs> spawn, and I, I, I got it down to where I can count down to where the next weapon or the next BR will spawn. Like I've That's gotten good. that that many times to know that. So I'm like, eh, it'd be nice to get a different map. <laughs> it's just like, come on. But I'm I'm hoping that they kind of help that out here soon. I mean, it, I don't I don't mind playing the same maps over and again, but I do want to play Truth. I love that map so much in the beta. Like I, I've yet to play. It. I've yet to find that in any game type yet. I'm still not a big fan of Truth. Really? Regret? I don't like at all. No, I don't like regret either. We've had this t- discussion before on. A- I like we regret. Had this discussion on the beta. Yeah, See, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. My, I, I guess with truth, all my complaints were fixed. Like the lighting, the lighting in general. I don't think anybody's really talked about this. The lighting in Halo Five, they tweaked it very well. Yeah, like it is greatly improved. Except from, for on except for on Orion. Yeah, See, Orion's kind of. I didn't have any problems with Orion. Uh, yeah, I had problems. I take it back. I did get Orion twice in SWAT. Yeah, that sun glare problem. It's still there. Huh. It, it, it's not any better than it was. If you spawn over there where that sniper is, or well, supposed to be, or was, yeah, yeah. you want to put it. You come out from behind them rocks. You can't see Jack. I don't really, I, it may, and not to say anything bad, but it may be your TV settings because I've noticed this with a couple different situations. No, I've actually I'm, got mine set dark. Right. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, like my TV, I see it. It doesn't have that glare too much. Like I know it's there, but I went to my friend's house and it was a lot more noticeable. I don't know if there was the saturation or brightness or what anything. It could be a little bit different. Um, that's the only reason why I say that everything could be a little bit less noticeable because they, I remember that being a huge problem in the beta and like people made that known that that sun's killing things. <laughs> like people are dying because of it because they can't see. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the only- calibrate, I use an actual computer monitor mm-hmm. and I've calibrated the monitor with the Xbox software. Okay. So it is balanced to the xbox and i noticed that that the glare on that sun is really really a problem if you are trying to shoot in that direction you can you know granted you can move and get around it but if you happen to spawn right there and you're getting shot you won't be able to see where you're getting shot from at least i can't right I don't know. The only thing I have problem with lighting wise is the energy sword. That's the only thing I have any problems with. Um, Orion has some things that are kind of messed up, but the energy sword is the only thing I have a major problem with. Like it still lights up a big portion of my screen. Like it's kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, see, honest. I didn't notice it as much as I did before. Of course, before we were using the Prophet's Bane, which is a much bigger sword. Yeah. But I didn't notice that glare. Well, I, I take that back. We did have the regular energy sword on Eden. Yeah. But I did not notice the glare from the energy sword as much as I did in the beta. Oh, it, yeah. I mean, they toned it, it down. Like, but... It wasn't like blinding my right eye. Yeah. It's, <laughs> if, I mean, for me, it's still there. Uh, it's it's not as like it's not as bad as it was in the beta. But to me, it's still there mm-hmm. compared to past Halo game like Halo 4. It, I didn't never I didn't have that kind of problem. So it's it's petty. It is. It's a, it's a petty complaint, but it's just something that that would it would be nice if they kind of fix it a little bit better. They, I just I'm really happy that this launch of this game was uh, to me it was almost perfect. I was able to get home from the midnight launch, pop it in, update it, and get into games almost instantly. Compared to past launches that we've seen with MCC, like that's kind of the biggest one people you know refer to. But it was. Just, almost flawless this i i don't even relate it to mcc i relate this to any major game release where the xbox live or psn or whatever servers are just getting flooded with people i have not noticed this time around with halo i mean there's been a bug or two here but i've been able to play 
Yeah. yeah and I, my I, friend, I, my friends have been able to play. And so kudos to the entire Xbox, Microsoft, and 343 teams because they, I, I mean, I think we all kind of expected they were going to do everything they could to make sure this launch went flawlessly, but they, they really delivered this time. And yep. that like, and this is not just a Microsoft 343 issue. I mean, Call of Duty games in the past, if you're trying to play on launch night, or the day of launch, you know, usually you just run into those connectivity issues. And I haven't really run into that this go around. And that's really awesome to have this go around. Yeah, yeah I don't. The only thing I had was one little bug. When I first fired up the game, I had to back out and relaunch the game because it wouldn't. I couldn't play anything because it couldn't connect to Xbox Live services to verify that I had a live account or something. I don't know what it was. It never really gave me an error. It just. Uh, to get in there and actually start playing, I had to restart the game. And that could just, it was just a one time bug. I haven't had to do it since. Yeah, the yeah. only thing I had a bug with was when I popped a disc in, it was giving me the option to download it um, from the Xbox store rather than actually just playing it. Like it was reading the disc and the disc was in there, but it, like when I clicked on it, it only wanted to actually download it from the store. I don't know what that was about. I don't even think that was any sort of problem. I think that was just on Xbox's part. But that's the only bug I've re- experienced so far. Like, that's that's about it. And we all know what kind of luck Bio has with electronic devices. D- 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 yeah. For me, not to have any sort of problems with a game is unheard of. Like, that's that's every <laughs> that, that's a big thing for me um or that's computers what... or cell phones or yeah skype or can't find a microphone oh or zombies <laughs> zombies yes zombies gerbil zombies <laughs> not, running fast, not running fast enough losing limbs <laughs> <laughs> what my leg got caught in the wheel brip <laughs> you've got no arms left yes i have Oh man, just a flesh wound. <laughs> but no, just a flesh wound. And I, I, I think I can speak for a lot of people out there. I think this Halo Five was the third strike for a lot of people. Was for me. Yeah, like a lot. Three, four, three knew that, and they pretty much made it. Like, yeah, this is we're gonna have to get this right the first time, the second it comes out. And I'm sure whoever was behind that desk at that midnight launch was just watching to see what was going to happen with those servers, those numbers and everything else. Oh, I and, guarantee everybody at 343 had their fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. It's like, please don't crash. Well, the uh, thing that... When, uh, at launch, I saw Bravo. He showed up really late because he was you know, monitoring a lot all day. <laughs> yeah. And I saw him as like, so how's it going? He goes, I've been looking at monitors all day. Like <laughs> they, that they were definitely keeping their fingers crossed and monitoring it very mm-hmm. closely. Yeah. The thing, the thing that was kind of promising that I seen was with live streams and stuff like that was when you, people got early access to MCC, there were problems like everyone was experiencing before then. So like for people to have the only problem that I seen people run into was the fact that there wasn't enough people playing to actually get a game Mm -hmm. at certain times. Like that's the only problem that I seen. I'm like, well, that's not going to be a problem when everybody jumps on the servers. Like if anything, it would kind of crash the servers or anything else. And it didn't happen. Like it didn't happen. It was a very smooth uh, launch. Very. Which is awesome. It's a complete, a, a complete, restoration in faith of of halo i think and i I hope it's that way for a lot of people that they just kind of came out of the gate with a a solid game now granted there are some pieces that are missing that people want to see in there which is which is fine we'll get forge and some other game types here in december we're gonna get some more maps coming throughout the next eight months which is also just completely and utterly awesome but it's just it's been a solid launch i don't think i've and i think other people i've seen other people say this too but i have not been this convinced to be playing halo on a daily basis now since like halo 2 halo 3 kind of kind of the beginning of reach 2 
I can say for a fact that I'm pr- going to spend more time on this game than any other Halo I've had in the past. And that's a big commitment to say because I put a lot of hours into Reach and 3. But this game, like, it draws me back every single day. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, antsy to get, like, just to play it now. Like, there's there's a lot of stuff that I'm loving about it. And the thing that's crazy is it's, like, people are talking about it again. That's that's the one thing I've noticed a lot is that, you know, when MCC came out, they're like, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they didn't really want to talk about it because they, you know, they were kind of pissed off, and rightfully so. But... This time around, I'm not seeing negativity. I'm seeing more positive. I'm seeing a lot more things connecting to the positive and past Halos. Like we said before, it's, it feels more like Halo 2 than our 343's Halo 2. And that's a really good thing to see. And especially when it comes to esports, when they start doing that again. Like, I can't, I can't wait. Like, I really cannot wait to see what ESL and... Uh, has this time around for halo 5 we got a glimpse of it at gamescom but i think people were a little bit more turned off at that point because everybody was you know conversating about sprint the armor abilities and all that stuff and a lot they i guarantee people are just waiting for the game to come out and see what you know the leaders or the community leaders have to say about it and they've been positive so far so i'm really hoping this game lights the torch again for the halo franchise and i think it will I just can't wait to see what these pros do with these partner abilities. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching Neighbor and Ghost Ayame use these things against each other, and they were doing things I hadn't even thought of that you could do with these. And when now that the masses are getting their hands on it and millions of people are playing this, I think we haven't even scratched the surface of what these are going to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I've seen some combinations of moves and I'm like, I don't think I can make my fingers do that. Yeah. There's I've ran into several situations to where I did. I ran like I was just sitting there doing and playing the game normally. And I ran into a combination. I didn't even, I wasn't even a trying to do. And I'm like, that's really effective. Let's see if I can do that again. And it, it worked like the, the pro lot or the pro jump and all that stuff has helped me tremendously with a lot of different things. Yeah, and I'm still working on that one. <laughs> it yeah, it's there's there's a lot of stuff that I didn't I didn't see coming with these Spartan abilities or armor ability or Spartan abilities. Yeah. This game has a lot of potential for a lot of stuff. You know, not just in the sense of ESL and esports and all that stuff, but just to see what other people will do with the game with everything that we have so far. And that's what's honestly has my hopes up like i I really i really want to see what these people are going to be able to do i mean we've seen them do remarkable things with halo 3 and they didn't it that was no offense but it was really slow (laughs) now everybody's speeding around jumping thrusting doing all this crazy stuff it's going to be interesting to see what combinations they have up their sleeves this time around you know we came up with a new combo and stuff and they presented things live in front of thousands of people it's going to be interesting to see what's going to be the next big thing for Halo for the next couple of games to come out. It's going to be awesome to see. Well, it's really got me peaked. My interest peaked is flag juggling with the abilities. Yeah. Yeah. You can use all these Spartan abilities with while you're carrying the flag, which is pretty cool. The flag juggling I haven't nailed yet. Like, I'm still having problems with it. I don't... I've always had problems with it, but... I'm, it's it's going to be interesting to see like some 360 no scope or something <laughs> with a flag <laughs> just jumping around with that that thing or something something crazy. Uh, but capture the flag, I felt or I feel has been is more competitive than I've witnessed before. I don't know if that's probably just me saying that, but I honestly feel that way because we we I had a couple of custom games I was in. I'm like, this is insane. Like. There was a time where people were just doing some stupid stuff like camping in a corner. Like they're hiding behind rocks and all that stuff with a f- <laughs> rocket launcher and stuff. But it was it was intense. There was a lot of intense moments in that game that I haven't really noticed until uh, from Halo 3. Halo 4 didn't really have that. Um, granted, Halo 4, you couldn't let go of the flag. Once you grabbed it, you're pretty much screwed. But, nah, it's... 
I'm liking that. I like I like the I love the fact that they have the juggle back for the flag. I'm still uh still working on that. I did notice one thing today, and I don't know if you guys have noticed it either, that a flag melee is no longer a one hit kill. It is from the back. Yet, so. Just not from the front. It used to be from the front too. Uh, well, I know I know no, well, not any melee's one want- uh, any melee is a one-hit kill. So that's kind of alternated between games. Yeah, if I think it's one or two, or they they can't seem to figure out which way they want it to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know we were playing earlier, we're playing capture flag, and of course somebody was charging me. I melee them with flag, and they're still alive. I'm like, damn it! <laughs> and then they kill me. <laughs> yep, that's one of the perks of carrying the flag. Don't get cocky. Yeah, but you also have a flag them now too, so. The Flagnum. That's another thing. The pistol's back again. Dude, I am loving the pistol. Yeah. Me too. That yeah, thing it, is, oh my gosh. I love it so much. It's definitely a nod off to CE. It really, it, to, me, to me, it feels that way. Because AR and pistol starts, like, I don't even go to the AR. 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 It's either, I'm, I have that pistol whipped out right there and then and just keep on going throughout the entire match or pick up a br and that's where i go from there that ar does not get touched for me at all yeah i mean there's a lot of a lot of new things we've got to get used to and i just you know honestly i've been using the pistol whenever i get it uh whenever i have it in matchmaking yeah even in warzone i'm using the pistol i wish in the game they give you more pistol ammo in campaign yeah yeah, I wish they gave ammo out a lot in campaign. That's one beef I do have with it. You run out of primary so you play a little too quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm constantly looking, and it's because I don't know where all the ammo crates are. You know, like I do in the old, older games, run but I'm of- always seem I'm always running out of you know running empty on ammo. It's just unreal. You know, once I learn where all the the different ammo crates are and i get more familiar with the campaign you know it won't be so much of a problem but well the ammo crates are everywhere well i meant for human weapons oh they're there yeah they're there but they're just not as obvious as the well i just haven't found them yet yeah they're they were definitely one of those things that i had trouble finding them whenever i was going through my first playthroughs but they are around you just have to know where to look that's all right. I get my primer guide tomorrow, so I'm good. Pick mine up today. I got mine sent in my goodie bag. Lucky what you. A- yeah. So 343 was very, very generous and sent quite a few different community members a, a, a seriously a Halo swag bag. Like, no joke, a Halo swag bag. It was a, a bag full of Halo swag. I want that bag. You can have everything that's in it. I want the bag. <laughs> Well, I think it's like 70 or 80 bucks from Mustard Brand, so... No, I want your bag. But it's my bag. And so? I want your bag. But 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 that's my this bag. This is how America works now, Dust, all right? Yes. But yours you is You get the mine. free stuff, and then you pass it on to us. That's right. Speaking Except of passing staff. on, we are going to be having some giveaways for some of that stuff that we got. Um, we are going to be announcing a giveaway tomorrow... Um, or Saturday, depends on when I have time to actually set it up. But it's going to be based on um, just kind of following all of our social networks. So we have a Astro A40 with the M80 mix amp, the Halo 5 version of that. We have uh, a few of the Last Light copies that Simon Schuster actually gave us. So they reached out to me on friday last week and said hey we have some giveaway copies we'd like to give to you so we have five of those copies to give away we also have some mega block stuff that we're going to be giving away um along with a few other things that we got in that swag bag so we have plenty of stuff that we're going to be giving away and we have some other copies of halo 5 guardians the digital deluxe edition that we still have to give away speaking of which we're giving away one right now on stream so uh, for anyone that is interested in wanting to pick up a copy of the, the Deluxe Edition that's listening right now, put in exclamation giveaway, and that'll put you into the drawing that we'll decide here in a few minutes. And I think there's a few other kind of giveaway stuff that we'll do afterwards, but that's we're going to be doing a lot of our giveaway stuff here over the next 
week or so. So we'll make the announcement of the giveaway and then we will be announcing the winner of the giveaway stuff on our podcast next week. So lots of opportunities to win some pretty cool Halo stuff. Thanks to 343 and then thanks to Mega Blocks for giving us some stuff at New York Comic Con and then Simon and Schuster for hooking us up with five copies of Last Light to give away. So re- really, really, really cool of them to to reach out and let us do that. It's been really awesome to, to have them uh, be supportive of the podcast and getting us a few books early to get our hands on and, and read. Definitely some good stuff. We'll be doing some lore stuff probably a little closer to the beginning of next year just because we'll have a bunch of Halo stuff to talk about. And from a podcast perspective, we're actually going to be doing a lot more structured shows. So we're going to be entering into a, a format that we'll be doing campaign discussion, a multiplayer discussion. We'll be hitting up any news or any new stuff that's going on, some community stuff. And then your feedback. We're going to be really pushing for your guys' feedback. So one of the things that we used to do back in the day, way back in the day, even before I was around, um, there was a lot more prevalent back then, but Tales from the Foxhole uh, community and, um, creations whenever we get Forge, we really want to highlight that from you guys. We really want to be a community-based podcast where we're highlighting your stuff that you're doing within Halo 5 Guardians. We're retelling your stories, whether it is through funny videos or some really just funny moments that you have in campaign. We want to hear about all that kind of stuff. So tell your friends to let us know about it. Send it to us on Twitter, Facebook, share it with us via email or voicemail, all that stuff. So we really want to hear from you guys about your experience in Halo 5. We want to share it with others and just have a good time just seeing how good of a time you're having in Halo. Because this is, I think, the first time that a lot of people are, are this excited to play Halo, probably since Halo Reach. Three. And Halo 3 for some. So please do that. And there are several ways you can do that. One, like I said earlier, you can email us, submissions at podtagler.com, or you can shoot us a voicemail. You can either call our number, which is 240-200-HALO. That's 240-200-4256. Or you can record a short MP3 and send it to us via email as well. Make sure the attachments are under 20 megs. I think that's usually the max attachment size. Or you can upload it to any kind of share that you have access to. So there's lots of different file sharing sites out there that you can use. Um, and then just share it to us that way with a link in the email. Or you can just shout us out on Twitter or Facebook and we'll pick those up as well. Just put it out in the forums. We have our forums that uh, we have on our website. And then also just make sure that you share the podcast around with other people. Let them know that uh, we're looking for this kind of stuff just to highlight them on the show and, and just really kind of sh- showcase what the community has in Halo 5 because this is the time to shine. This is the, the time. This is the comeback for the community. I feel it. I feel it with Halo 5. This is the comeback. And, and I'm excited for it. You can also check out our YouTube stuff. We have lots of Halo 5 content coming soon. I'm actually putting up the first Intel guide tonight as, long, as well as the final episode of Halo CE, Achieving Halo, Halo CE, thanks to Godzilla T for doing all of that over the last few months. It's been uh, really nice of you to, to do that. And thank you for sticking with it to the very end. It was a uh, very, I guess, timely, because I can't think of the other word, but very timely that you had the last episode done the day before Halo 5 was coming out. We do plan to continue that series, though, and go through Halo 2, 3, ODST, 4, Halo Wars, um, and 5 as well. That is something that we plan on continuing to do, even though Halo 5 is kind of the focus at the moment, but Expect more videos for that coming out. We also have our Intel guides coming out. We'll have our Skull guide out as well within the next week or so. Also, the legendary weapons in the campaign is also something that people may be interested in. So we're going to be doing a video on that here soon. And of course, we're looking for some clips from people. Um, If we get enough, we'll be doing top tens on probably a monthly basis or so. We have people interested in helping us out making those kinds of videos. So if that is something that you have, 
if there are any clips that you have that you want to send our way, then please, please do that. We would love to see what you guys are experiencing in Halo 5. Any like seriously awesome moments or any just really, really dumb, funny moments. We want to see it all. So shoot on and over to us. Finally, make sure you check out our podcast network. We are part of a conglomerate of different gaming specific shows. So shows like Critscast, which is a TF2 podcast, Guardian Radio, which is a Destiny podcast, The Learning Cliff, which is an EVE Online podcast. And then there are a couple other there's over there. There are a couple others over there as well. Sorry, messing up my speech. Been playing too much Halo or not enough sleep. Probably the latter. Make sure you check them out. You can find that over at podka.st and let them know that we sent you. And I believe that is going to wrap it up for the show. I'm going to go ahead and pick a winner here as we close up. But thank you everyone for tuning in. Halo 5 is here. It is wonderful. We are having such a good time with it. We hope that you are too. If you have not joined the Spartan Company, we encourage you to join ours. You can head on over to podtagler.com slash company which redirects you to the company profile page on Halo Waypoint. And go ahead and request to enlist, and we will get you added. We are very focused on Warzone right now, but we are going to be definitely balancing out the focus to transition to Arena. We'll kind of make some battalions that will be focused on doing Arena stuff. But the kind of initial push right now is for Warzone, because that's what a lot of people really want to play. So we're going to have weekly events for our company, on top of our normal Frag and Fridays for now. Now we'll have a more solid schedule here, hopefully by next week. Please make sure you check out the company if you're not part of one already, and make sure you check out our game nights. That will wrap it up for us tonight. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been episode 515, and we will see you guys next week. 